Welcome to Space Vidcast, episode 33 for December, what is it, 12th, 2008. <laughs> no. This has not been a good technology night for us <laughs> at all. Within the last hour, we've lost power twice. Yeah. Um, we apparently don't know which buttons to hit at what point in time. And when I try to hit the buttons, they're not working. So this is going to be a fantastic <laughs> show. We are excited here at the Space Vidcast World Headquarters in Minneapolis, <laughs> Minnesota. Galactic Headquarters in Minneapolis, <laughs> Minnesota. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. This is my beautiful, mm. lovely, talented, incredible, and scrum wife. <gasps> Carrie Ann, and we are the Space Vidcasters. I already said we're Scrum Trelescent. That's the one. If you don't know that word, look it up. <laughs> you should. So let's get on. <laughs> uh, we've got a, a light show in the front. It's going to be light and airy and kind of fun and campy. Like me. And Yep. And in the back half of the show, it's going to be a little bit, a little bit more heavy, so we're going to rely on our live chat room to give us some opinions and... <laughs> Uh, kind of weigh in on the topic at hand, which is going to be NASA's administrator, Dr. Mike Griffin. Love him or hate him, he is definitely opinionated. He's and the Jesse Ventura, I think, of NASA. <laughs> yep. And he's, you know, with the Obama transition team going in there, he's kind of, you know, doing his he's doing thing. He's doing his thing. Yeah. Doing his <laughs> he's thing. doing his Mike Griffin so thing. So we'll, we'll tell you what that is in the back half of the show. But I think uh, up front we should start off with some space news. Space news! All right. <laughs> we really do need to get t-shirts with the little space hand news. signal yeah. thing. And then people can be like... You know, I like the t-shirt idea with the... For those of you who were with us last week and in post-show watching this live, good for you, for, by the way, uh, we had the we came up with the idea of having different shirts for different uh, types of things with like your time zone because we're, we're totally against uh, different time zones. We're, we're all about the coordinated universal time mm -hmm. on Space Vidcast, so we want to have like the... Uh, UTC is greater than or, you know. Yeah, greater than or equal to GMT. Exactly, or the I'm a negative <laughs> six, what are you? Stuff like that. All right, so let's get started with some space news. What do you got first? Okay, what do I have first? Actually, I guess I should maybe ask you that, as a well, matter of fact. Whatever, I'm, I'm ready with whatever. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right, well, just want to let you know that there are some British kids who have taken their teddy bears to new heights. Boom! How's that for an answer? Yeah. And yes, those are actual pictures of actual teddy bears in actual space. <laughs> I thought it was hysterical. Um, what I think is really cool, it says, uh, you know, not often a Brit, a Brit can claim uh, a win in the space race, as it were. But these kids have gotten together. They actually have a uh, society. Let me see if I can call up that name really quickly for you. It's a student-run space flight society. And the okay. whole goal in general is they're working towards reducing the cost of suborbital space flight. And so far, they've launched several payloads to near space on high-altitude helium balloons. Like that which, one there. There's that gigantic balloon there. And they're designing a system to launch a rocket from a balloon platform in outer space for under for under a th about a thousand dollars, essentially. But how, how big of a payload can they launch? I mean, they're launching teddy bears. I assume they're not going to be launching people right. into space no, with no, this. No, 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 no. And 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 actually, I don't know what picture you're at there, but eventually you'll be able to see that there are four teddy bears total hmm. on this particular payload, and a camera is getting a shot of each side. So there's two on each side. I think it's funny that they dressed up the teddy bears in faux spacesuits. I no, they're like it's like tin foil <laughs> and like the bottom of a, a soda two liter bottle. Model and I love it. I they've named them. I mean the whole thing. I think it's hysterical. It looks like they parachute back down and they come to a safe landing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why they have the spacesuits. They got to protect them. From the <laughs> right. Well, they did have to endure temperatures of negative fifty three Celsius, mm -hmm. which um, unfortunately for those of you who don't know what Celsius is, I didn't look it up in Fahrenheit. So I'll just figure that out on your own. Um, but they landed about fifty miles away from their launch pad, which is pretty good. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I mean, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I thought the whole thing was really cool. And, and considering how far up they got, I mean, they really got, they got essentially into space. I mean, they have pictures of the bears with the curvature of the Earth in yeah, the background. Yeah, we were just on one. Yep, and now I think that's awesome. Now we're showing them uh, landed on the ground. Is that just the cutest thing? I want to uh, launch a teddy bear into space. <laughs> Bearsicles, as OM says. <laughs> So, and they had a webcam going up there, with the, you know, so they could see the little bears in the spacewalk and stuff like that. And that's how we got they these had pictures, the, obviously. The, they have a spacewalk? Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> Carbon Cat's asking if it was sub suborbital flight. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We're only talking like 100,000 feet. Yeah. But still, 
Yeah, we're we're not even in like low Earth orbit or or anything like. But yeah, no, it's a fun campy story. We I launched mean, you little kids. We put you saw ten, the first picture, right? You got to think. All right, think of it this way. Uh, all, we have advanced so much in science and technology that children are putting teddy bears into space. Go back a hundred years <laughs> and ask on. someone: Do you think a ch- elementary school child or you know high school or younger child will be able to put their teddy bear? into space i do not think they would answer a yes i think it's adorable and, and then I, the other thing i really appreciate about it, appreciate about this is that these kids are interested enough to do this mm-hmm. you know it's well, not who just wouldn't about put something into space that's what i think dude i want to i like i'm looking for things near me i'm like i can put this into space, what, put the, bubble head in space. The, the audio board's going in space <laughs> that right just, now. i thought that that was cute and it you know it it, it creates a, a a commonality between all of them and then they can go on and Ooh, as Carbon, I my mic. Carbon says, if you, if you can reach space with a helium balloon, tie 50 of them to me. <laughs> I know! See? That's what I mean! I just think it's I think it's adorable. Yeah. So I'm not sure that the spacesuit that they actually used for their teddy bears would work for you very well, Carbon. I'm just letting <laughs> you know right now, I don't think the uh, the plastic bag they had over the head of the teddy bear is a good, <laughs> a good idea for you. All right, moving on. All right, so... For those of us who do celebrate different holidays during this quote-unquote holiday season... And you do like space, you know, sending out a cute little Christmas card or Christmaka card or Christmica. Hanukkah card or Christmas Kwanzaa card or whatever it is that you want to send out. Sometimes they're a little boring. You know, they only have a dreidel on them. They only have a snowflake on them. They only have a, you so know. So the question is, what card are all of our faithful Space Vidcast viewers? What, what card should they be sending me? Right. Because they should be sending me cards. Right. Well, here's here's one. I like this one personally that one or the other one that was I, just up there? i like the other one better but that's a good one as well uh at hubblesite.org they actually have an entire gallery of uh i don't know about how many cards there are here probably about 20 or so um cards that you can actually download you can get the pdf and all that other fun stuff i know cat had seen this earlier and put it up a little while ago um but these are pictures of hubble or from or, Hubble. Uh, not of Hubble, from Hubble. Oh, yeah. man, I can talk. I swear I can. These are That's pictures the one. That's from the one like. Hubble. That's the one I really like. Yep. Um, and they're not necessarily like all too. Christmas related, but they are seasonally seasonally related, like the one you saw with the picture of the moon, and they kind of superimpose the dove on and, and stuff like that. Uh, so some of them are really, really pretty. Uh, some of them are, are just kind of spacey in general. They're not spacey necessarily pretty, if you say. Uh, but I think that they're really cool, and and what a great idea, and, and uh, especially for somebody who might want to make their own cards, mm-hmm. as it were, you can just kind of put that. So those will be in our show notes if you guys, like I said, you can download all of them. You get the PDF, you can get the uh, 5 by 7 version, or the 4 by 6 or you can whatever it is that you want to do with that. And uh, I thought that was a kind of a cute, creative, spacey sort of way to say, and don't forget about space. Yeah, so you can uh, put that card in an envelope with a $1,000 check. Send that to Ben Higginbotham <laughs> at Space Vidcast Studios. <laughs> All right. And the final news item. Ooh. Final news item. I messed it up. But did okay. you? Yeah, somehow I magically did not size this correctly. Awesome. And I can't use the quick thing anymore because no. that's broken. So, you know, you guys will just have to deal. No, and of all places on the face of the earth, you'll never believe where I found this, from pinktentacle.com. What you're looking at is an origami space shuttle. Now, who would make an origami space shuttle, you might ask? Well, of course, the Japanese, because really, who else makes origami stuff? (laughs) But the point is... That's horrible! (laughs) I know. I didn't mean it like that. (laughs) Okay, anyway. So, (laughs) the point is that why do we have origami space shuttles? Well, we don't have them just for fun. We have them because they're going to be taking experimental flights from the International Space Station down to Earth. Okay. Made from very specific kinds of paper that are able to withstand uh, the different temperatures and all of that other fun stuff. They're only about 14 inches long. So okay, so here's what it really is. Here's what, exactly what's going on. Someone was like, dude, I want to throw an airplane, a paper airplane from no, the ISS. No. There's no. like, there, I swear, there's someone that has a bet with someone else like, I can throw a paper airplane the furthest. And this guy was like, I'll take you up on that bet. That's no, exactly what it is. No, that's not what happened. That's what it is. That's not what happened. But mm-hmm. this paper, I think it's really cool that the paper itself, you know, that it's it's soft enough that you can fold it and bend it, yep. but yet it's hardy enough that it can withstand 400 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, heat, right? Yeah. yeah. 
I thought that that was really cool. Um, this is all done by JAXA through the University of Tokyo. <laughs> oh, and that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Man killed by paper airplane thrown from ISS. News yeah. at 11. Yeah, I don't know how many people... Uh, it, there's one picture. I don't know if it was actually shown on there. But on the very I, bottom of it... I know, I know, I know. Um, they actually have messages printed on the very bottom in 10 different languages, basically just explaining what it is, what's going on. So we don't have a, uh, you know, the sky is falling kind of mm -hmm. situation or, oh my God, we're giants. Look at these teeny tiny little Japanese people in here. So you don't have that sort of uh, thing going on. But really, all in all, what it is geared towards is to look at different uh, space shuttle uh, configurations, different folding techniques or different something, something to hopefully go towards a new uh, shuttle design. Yep. So basically, if we're building shuttle shuttles out of play paper now, mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Or, or, and I'm going to have to go for more likely story, someone has a bet <laughs> that they can throw the paper airplane the furthest distance. You know, I hate And whoever is going to do, whoever's doing this is going to win said bet. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. But one of the things that they're going to be thrown from the Kibo uh, lab on the ISS in case anybody cares. And uh, we're not sure if uh, the Japanese astronaut is going to, uh, what Keita, is going to throw him himself or if he's going to use the steady station's robotic arm. I think it's cool. It would be so cool to throw it with a robotic arm. Imagine for a moment. <laughs> just picture this in your mind's eye, if you could. The giant robotic <laughs> arm, the Canada Arm 2, with a paper airplane <laughs> at the end. Just like, <laughs> I, oh, time minor, that's better. Dexter, the dexterous Dexter on the ISS throwing a paper airplane. Oh, yes. This, this is awesome stuff. All right. Let's end this out with our TLA of the week, shall we? Our TLA of the week, we're, we're making these moderately difficult for you guys. We're trying to make it so you can't just Google these and figure out what the answer is, because I, I know you guys do that. I, I watch you. I can hear you click Google when we put the TLAs up there. Yeah, exactly. I, I'll answer that question. I'm sure. Google, so this is, so yeah. Mean. See if you can figure this so one out. Mean. You guys watching live in the chat room, what is LFC? Have an answer when we return.
All right, so the question was, what is LFC? And, of course, the, you guys went to Google after I told you not to go to Google. <laughs> I thought I had warned you. And the, the <laughs> chat room seems to have the consensus of, what was it, Liverpool Football Club? Was mm -hmm. that it? Yeah, that was a good one. Um, I, can, I can say with a certain amount of certainty here that um, the Liverpool Football Club is not a NASA <laughs> acronym. Uh, oh, Carbon Cat got it. I love the level flight control. Yeah, that was it, a good one. It is a large <laughs> format camera. As an IMAX, but I do like OM's uh, left foot crippled. Left? That's a good one as well. <laughs> I think that's an OM acronym. An not OMCRIMIN. An, yes, not a... Uh... <laughs> So, oh, oh, is November Cat saying that she came? She found this one first? I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm not there. I don't know what to Ooh, tell I you. I think we've got a spat in the in the in the chat room. Uh oh, mm. what have we started? So, to me, today's <laughs> main topic is Dr. Mike Griffin from NASA. He's the NASA administrator, the current NASA administrator, mm -hmm. and we've got a new administration coming into office, the Obama administration, and there's a transition team. And he doesn't seem to want to play ball, is my general... Yeah, it kind of sounds like he's given a great big old F you to them in general. And, and the thing is, you could take either side, it yep. sounds like. It sounds like you could take Mike Griffin's side and say, look, I'm telling you the truth. You know, this is what's going on. This is what we need to do. And uh, there's a reason I was put in an authoritative position in this particular company or this segment. Organization. Organization, thank you. So I could tell you what's going on. Or you could take the transitional team's point of view and say, look, we just want to know what's going on. You know, so you just let us in. You open our doors, your doors, and uh, we'll just come in and, and see see what is going on. So I'm going to take the side of the transition team in that uh, if they've got nothing to hide, what's the big deal? You know, so his, his point was... I'll take Mike Griffin's point, and Mike Griffin's point, and I, I understand this. Like I said, you can take either side, so I'm just going to take Mike's side. Don't, nobody yell at me if you disagree. Ugh. But, you know, look, I already know what's going on. I already told you what's going on, and if you didn't come in here and have to ask 1,004 questions, then we could move forward. But because people are coming in, and they're messing around, and they're asking questions, and they're taking my engineer's time and all of these other people's time... We're just getting backlogged more so than we need to be. Yeah, okay. So those are kind of the two sides. You know, he's also saying, he also said something along the lines, or was overheard as, as to saying, um, uh, what was the exact quote? Something like, I can find it, go uh, ahead. You know, if, if I have to re explain this, or if, if you don't, if you keep looking behind the scenes, clearly you don't trust me. And why. Here you go. Somebody said, Mike, I don't understand what the problem is. We're just trying to look under the hood. And Mike came back with, if you're looking under the hood, then you're calling me a liar because it means you don't trust what I say is under the hood. Booyah! Mm. Right? I mean. By the way, the answer is a rocket. There is a rocket under the hood, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Oh man, that's so, really awful. So that's that's kind of what's going on. The big spat mm. with Dr. Mike Griffin, and he is, uh, you know, he is definitely a personality. Right. I mean, like we said earlier, whether you love him or you hate him, he says exactly what's on his mind. So you, you, there's no second guessing that, which is why I kind of called him the the Jesse Ventura of the NASA organization um, in general. But, you know, again, you may not always agree with what he has to say. As Carbon is saying, you know, NASA really needs to concentrate on Constellation, which is the Aries and Orion vehicles, and, you know, figure out what they're going to do between the five-year gap between when they shut down the space shuttle, which is coming up in 2010, mm -hmm. and w which is, when you think about it, about a year away. Yeah, I mean, 2009 is on our doorstep. So about a year from now, the space shuttle will be forever retired. And if you've never seen a space shuttle launch, I highly recommend you make it down for one of the last Do remaining space shuttle can't. launches. And don't think for a minute that all these shuttles will launch. If there is another disaster, there very well will just signal the straight up end of the shuttle program as we know it. So definitely do it sooner rather than later. I, of course, am voting for STS-125 because that's just a cool mission. But, you know, STS-119 <laughs> is up next. Uh, so... We, we've got this big gap, and his Carbon's point is NASA really needs to concentrate on Constellation right now. My point is, okay, that's fair, but you're already so far behind. What are a couple of months going to really hurt you so that you can really give a good, solid picture right. to the president 
and the president's team who's coming in who will be controlling your organization. Think about this. Who really are going to be making the decisions. Because These are the people as who... As much as Mike Griffin likes to believe or think that he is the end all when it comes to NASA, he's really not. They do... They are a part of the government. They have to answer to... The president. They they just do. And the president answers to the people. So he works for us. If Obama or anyone else on his team or, you know, whoever, when the it comes right down to it, if anyone has decided, you know what, screw him, you know, yeah. he's being stupid for whatever reason or we don't like it, we don't want it, we don't agree with it. It's out of there, and that's just the end of it. I'm, I'm a big fan of the embrace and extend philosophy, which is uh, even when we have people who are critical of Space Vidcast, we just sit down and we talk with them and they figure out why, you know, what what don't they like about Space Vidcast. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that if you just talk with people mm -hmm. and, and have a decent conversation over it and, and let them in, just let them in behind the scenes a little bit, mm -hmm. they'll usually open right up. Now, gov the, the, you know... A small video cast that has a small audience and no revenue is a little bit different than a large government organization that has a twenty billion dollar budget. For just sure, a, just a little, just a little, not a lot. <laughs> so you know, I can't, I can't say that I, I mean, I've ever been in his shoes, and I can't say that I know what's best. But I can't say it isn't a government organization. It should be transparent, and we should be able to see all of this stuff and know his word isn't good enough. There should be seconds and thirds and a bunch of different people saying the same thing. And that's not the case, by the way. There are people disagreeing with Dr. Griffin saying, you know what? No, we should continue this space shuttle through 2015 and we need to have a contingency plan there. Right, right. And Dr. Griffin seems to be uh, totally against that idea. Now, I actually agree with Dr. Griffin in that particular stance. Right. But, you know... It, that's kind of what some it's a what conversation this, it's a two-way you know? street and and right now they're at a standstill everyone's at a four-way stop and they're doing the minnesotan thing and letting the next guy go and so nobody's going yeah. uh you know one of the mibit user is saying privatize privatize well as we've been kind of poking our fingers around and and looking at different organizations i found that nasa has their fingers in quite a bit of private travel. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. Uh, you know, they're helping to build a next generation space fleet, and this, this helps them too. But, you know, private travel isn't... Private tra travel right now kind of needs NASA. Right. They're not and necessarily NASA needs exclusive private... of each other, I don't think. Right. I think they really do have some sort of harmony that they need to continue. Yeah. Now, having said that, I'm a huge advocate of private space travel. Oh, I absolutely. love the SpaceX's of the world, and I love the the Virgin Galactics and the, who, uh, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, uh, all those guys. Right. The, uh, John Carmack, anyone who's working on privatized space travel, huge fans of that. But they're a lot, you know, th they don't have the infrastructure that NASA has, so they can't do as much as NASA can do. So, but anyhow, it's kind point of the thing is, and Ken is saying, or. I'm, at least I think I'm saying that right, um, was saying who will provide the money. And the nice to whom? thing is... To NASA or private? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to take it. Who's, who's going to provide it to the private sector? And NASA is able to do that, and they are doing it. Right. You know, and, and granted, that's kind of why the private sector needs NASA. Right, right. I mean, to much. some benefit to NASA as well. So, it, 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 you know, in that, like I said, I mean, that's a harmony that is going on, and it, I think needs to continue. I think it's doing very well at this point. And, uh, of course, we, we're off point at this. At this, we are a little bit, but I, I think we kind of knew we were we were going to do that a little. But I, I just I think it's you know going back to Doctor Mike Griffin, there was talk as to whether he will continue to be the administrator because Obama can come in and be like, Psh! well, he was appointed by Bush. We're, okay, yeah, and, and, and Obama can appoint a new administrator if he Absolutely. wants. Absolutely. Uh, I I don't know, and I guess that's a question for the chat room, and that's a question for the comments. In, in YouTube and on the Space Vidcast site, what do you think of Dr. Mike Griffin? Is Should he continue as NASA's administrator? Do you agree with him? Should we shut down the space program in 2010 and make no attempt to continue it to 2015? Which means we will have no human spaceflight program in the United States for half a decade, possibly longer, if the Constellation program is delayed. And at this stage, it's, I, I think it will be delayed. Yeah. And, you know, actually, that's a conversation for a future time. I've been emailing back and forth. There, I, I am making the assumption that Constellation will get off the ground. Right. I, I think it will. But I've been emailed by a couple different people saying, no, I don't think Constellation will ever fly ever, ever. And uh, you just assume that it will fly because it comes from NASA. So that, right, I think, right. is a conversation we should have uh, coming up shortly. But do you agree with Dr. Dr. Griffin? Do you think that 
the transition team should just butt out, let NASA do their job, let them do their, their, they know what they're doing, let them take care of it and just trust what they're saying? Or do you think that NASA should be a little bit more forgiving for the transition team? You know, do, do you really agree with what, what he's been doing? I don't know. I, don't I know. like the drama. Well, yeah. <laughs> Makes for good space vidcasting. Yay! <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, that's the other, that's the other thing I disagree with him on is he's, uh, he said once in a, uh, press briefing i think it was that if you're looking for excitement or something like that watch desperate housewives it's not an exact quote but the general gist of it something along along those lines and uh i think i think he's got that totally wrong you can make space flight exciting without disaster you can make space flight engaging and fun and that goes back to the last show that we just had which had great participation from all of you thank you for that where you know, you just need to interact with the people that you serve, which mm -hmm. the American public, oh, heck, interact with the entire world. Why, why limit it to the United States? And make it personal. You know, make it something that is, is really, you know, quite right there. I, there was a really long text message <laughs> that was just thrown up I there by Carbon. Carbon. Yeah. Jeez, Carbon seriously hit enter once in a while. So I'm going <laughs> uh, to read that really quickly. Okay. Um, yeah, for those of you who maybe didn't see the last episode or, or anything like that, actually, you made a good point. You were talking about um, interacting with not just the people of America, but people of the entire world. I mean, that is kind of an Earth sort of situation. And NASA does have their fingers in with JAXA and does have their fingers in with, uh, you know, the Russian Space Agency and ESA. And it's not that they are unto their own. They they really are interacting with a lot of other uh, space agencies around the world. I think that's also a really good thing personally <laughs> bmx said you know long one typed out and now it doesn't want to post it well that's what <laughs> that's what post show is for so absolutely like i said leave your comments in the space vidcast site go to spacevidcast.com leave your comment right down there if you're on youtube leave your comment right there we love to hear from you we would love to hear your opinions and if you have a really good opinion we'll bring you on the show we'll talk about it absolutely. we like to have uh, civilized debates here where it's we're all about gathering information not necessarily being right and understanding that you know um I can be wrong, and I, as we argue points out and talk about them, I can change my opinion. He's I was normally not, though. I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm also always right. It's <laughs> kind of scary. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching us live right here at spacevidcast.com. You can watch us live every Friday at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. If you have no idea what time zone that is for you, go to timezone.com and figure it out. You can figure it out. Like, <laughs> Jeez, you people in Ouch. your time zones. Cow. <laughs> It's not that hard. We it's have the UTC in our little live box Jeez. if you want to look at it that way. Jeez. <laughs> You're so we'll mean. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>